Hi everyone. How you doing? It's been a little bit. I'd like to apologize just real quick for the lack of uploads in the last month. Um, school has just come down on me really hard. Um, finding out about a couple colleges pretty soon, so things are hopefully going to start slowing down a little bit. But um, I wanted to use this to kind of talk about some movies that I saw over the Thanksgiving week um, in terms of what I think either has Oscar contention or had looked to have Oscar contention, but I think has sort of died off a little bit because there are a couple of those. So I'm going to try and talk about four different films. I want to talk about Green Book, Widows, At Eternity's Gate, and The Front Runner, all four of which I, I was able to see over break. And I want to start with Green Book because Green Book really came out of, out of left field. Um, it was very lowbrow, uh, not many people really knew what it was, slash were looking forward to it. And then it won TIFF, which is a pretty coveted award. If I'm not mistaken, three billboards won that last year. Um, and it was a front runner for a lot of different categories. Now, it didn't win a ton of them, but it was still a front runner, and it was nominated pretty much all across the board. And I think we're going to be looking at a very similar situation when it comes to Green Book. I thought it was a fantastic film, and what's interesting about it is the reviews aren't like stellar you know it's it's i think it's at a solid 70 on metascore which is good don't get me wrong but there are a lot of other movies like a star is born and roma and first man even and black klansman that just seemed higher in terms of score which is strange considering how much green book shot up in terms of contention but on paper this movie really has everything that it needs to just be all across the board in terms of Academy Award nominations. Uh, at the very least, you have it taking a Best Picture nomination. A win, I think, is kind of slim in terms of chances because of its lack of possibility in the Best Director category, which is so tightly packed this year. Uh, that one's a very difficult one to describe or to predict whether you have Barry Jenkins in there, you have Damien Chazelle in there, you have Yorgos Lanthimos in there. There are a lot of swap outs that you could say. Peter Farrelly is definitely one that people have discussed. I personally don't really see a director nomination happening. I don't think the direction of that film is particularly what stands out. I think a lot of the other elements of it are what really make it shine. Um, and I think you're going to have a lot of these other movies like A Star is Born and like Roma and The Favorite and even Black Klansman and I don't know about If Beale Street could talk yet, but possibly First Man, where you've got the direction, which is quite possibly the key element of that film's success. So I find it difficult to believe that Peter Farrelly will be nominated up in this category, but if he is, I think it has a better shot at Best Picture in terms of winning, but I, I definitely think it'll be nominated. You've got Viggo Mortensen and Mahershala Ali, which are the exact kind of performances that the Academy is looking for, right? You have two strong leads. Mahershala is up for supporting, but they're both really driving the film, um, literally and figuratively. And the Academy loves performances leading and supporting that are able to play off of each other. Um, I use that example a lot with Matthew McConaughey and Jared Leto in Dallas Buyers Club, right? And Vigo puts on one of the best performances he's had in a while. And I think he's a very unsung actor, actually. I think that um, people don't give him the credit he deserves. I think they see his face and they go, oh, that's Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. But they don't realize how many amazing performances he's performances he's put on, like Captain Fantastic, A History of Violence, Eastern Promises. Um, he's a brilliant actor who doesn't get recognized for it enough, and I think his best shot would be if they were to do what I think they might do, which would be give Bradley Cooper Best Director, and then try and split the ticket and give Viggo Mortensen Best Leading Actor. There's a lot of campaigning for Viggo, and there's a lot of support from audiences in terms of his performance. It's hard to take a stereotype like that and form it into a real connectable character with genuine emotion, and I think Viggo Mortensen does that unlike any other actor would have been able to do, so I really appreciated that out of him. And then you have Mahershala Ali, who's just shot up to the top since um, the film won Toronto Film Festival. Um, and it's almost difficult to see anyone who would stand in his way of an Oscar. Uh, I don't see Richard E. Grant beating him. He's very good, but he's a nomination worthy at best. Uh, Adam Driver, who I think his chances have gone up in terms of a nomination, but he ain't going to win. Timothy Chalamet, who's steadily been decreasing over the past couple of months in terms of odds. Uh, who else do you have in there? Maybe Sam Rockwell for Vice, but I even think he's iffy in terms of a nomination. I, I really don't 
at the moment see anyone surpassing Mahershala Ali in terms of a win. I think the only thing that could hurt him is I think like sort of that sophistication, that aura that he's bringing off is very similar to that of Moonlight, and they may not want to give an Oscar for a very similar performance, but it's it's all kind of going to depend if he's just the one to run away with it. He is. But I think both of them are ones to look out for in terms of the acting categories, and I would definitely be on the lookout for that if you're trying to see these films. And I think without a doubt you're going to see it nominated in the screenplay category. Um... I mean, that's, I think that's, that's a given. I think that's a large part of why people are loving this film. Um, and I, 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 f I would struggle to, to cope with the idea that this movie would not be in the screenplay categories. Now, Green Book, I would definitely say, was the film I saw over this week that uh, has the most amount of contention. The next movie I saw was Widows, and I was heavily looking forward to Widows. And what I find interesting about this film was how heavy it was in terms of talks back way early in the season because it has when you when you look at the IMDb page right it's got everything that you you would anticipate it needing for being nominated you've got a new Steve McQueen film the first African American to ever win best director and you've got this cast that just seems endless and you have Gillian Flynn the writer of Gone Girl now, that being said, the only Oscar that Gone Girl was up for was Rosamund Pike, which is still very shocking to me because I think that film is excellent. But um, another one like Green Book, on paper, this film has everything you would think it needs to run away with some awards. And I think the reason it's not going to, and I don't know if it'll be nominated for anything at all. Uh, I know Viola had been talked up a lot, and she's good. Uh, I, I think she's really great. But it's not like a like an Oscar. No like it's, I, I find it difficult to be in my mind picturing the slideshow of actresses, and seeing Viola Davis's. No one ha thinks we have the balls to pull this off. Next to like Lady Gaga's raw emotional moments and Glenn Close's raw emotional moments and Olivia Coleman's just completely spectacular over the top performance. Like it's, I don't see it fitting into the category this year personally. I think it clashes a little bit, and I think that the the girl from Roma has a little bit more of a shot now. Um, but I think the issue with it, and theres I don't think there's any much of an issue with the film other than the ending, which leaves too much open-ended um, and almost feels unfinished, actually. But I think I, I love the film. Um, I think it went too mainstream. And Steve McQueen doesn't strike me as a filmmaker who's making movies for the sake of Academy Awards. 12 Years a Slave was really only the successful Oscar piece he's created, but this is really like his fourth feature film, I think. Um... He, I don't think he was gunning for Oscars. I, I actually think he was trying to make a mainstream action-type thriller crime film that appealed to the masses and that was original and unique in its execution so that people could see a new, fresh film. And as a result of that, I think he achieved that, and I think people are responding relatively well to this film, specifically critics. Audiences, have, I think, have been a little more mixed, but I, I think that in doing that, it sort of shut away his his chances. I think it's it's just a little too mainstream, and people will argue that mainstream films have been up for contention before, like Mad Max and The Martian and all that stuff. And yes, that is um, that is very true. But I think they were mainstream in an artistic sense, right? I mean, you've got Mad Max with just all these unbelievable practical effects and this wild direction and and all of these technical awards that are lending itself to become this Best Picture nominated film. Same with The Martian. You've got a strong lead performance out of Matt Damon. You have really solid direction out of Ridley Scott. You have a really, really, really strong script out of Drew Goddard um, that's not just like a mainstream script. It's, it's like a genuinely well-written script and I'm not downsizing Widows in any sense. But I don't think it has, like, the technical elements playing into it. It has really strong direction, um, but, and it's very unique, but I think the plot of it and the actual execution of it and how it plays out a little bit just much like a heist film, um, I, I don't know if it's going to get many nominations. I think it's sort of the same situation as The Town back from 2010, which, you know, you've got... Ben Affleck, who is an up-and-coming director, and you've got this great cast, and you've got this really great direction from it, and you've got this really great script, but the plot and the genre and those kinds of elements really slowed it down, and Jeremy Renner showed up, but that was about it, I think, and um, I don't think Viola doesn't have a shot, but I, I don't see it as like a lock-in as I used to. I thought she had a really, really good chance of being nominated, but 
Um, I definitely think that w with the attention the movie's been getting and how it's been being received and just th what the actual movie is, I think her chances have sort of gone down. But I definitely recommend the film. I think it's fantastic. Uh, just be careful of the ending. It's it's a little anticlimactic. It's a little disappointing. The third film I want to briefly talk about, I'm going to briefly talk about this one, is The Front Runner. It is Jason Reitman's second film of the year following Tully. Tully, which I actually really liked. Um, and I enjoyed this movie. I thought it was good. Um, it does a lot right, but it also does a lot wrong. There are a lot of very strange holes. Uh, it feels like pre-production was rushed in terms of actual story. Um, there are a lot of characters left underdeveloped that just makes the plot feeling a little empty. Um, but I do think that there's some really strong stuff about it. I really like Reitman's direction of it. Um, I like certain elements of the dialogue. I think sometimes it's trying a little too hard to be Aaron Sorkin, but I think that there are some moments where they do have some really solid stuff in there, and uh, I love the performances. I thought all of them were great, and I my only complaint with, like, Vera Farmiga and J.K. Simmons is I wanted more of them. Like, I just didn't get enough of their characters, and Hugh Jackman's fantastic, obviously. And, um, you know, a while back, some people had talked about Hugh Jackman getting a nomination, but the movie just doesn't have the campaigning for really anything, I don't think, and uh, Hugh Jackman... It's, it's too tight of a year in terms of the leading actor category for him to fit in there. Someday he's going to pick up his Oscar. Uh, I don't really know when it'll be. Maybe it'll be the Ferrari film um, that's gone through a lot in production. I know Christian Bale was signed to it originally, and then he dropped, and then Hugh Jackman came on, Numi Rapace is on there, and I, it's still being made, I believe, but that could be it. But leading actor is very tight this year, and I don't think it's Hugh Jackman's chance to get nominated. I think it could be one of those crazy toss-ups where all of a sudden they just throw his name out, but I would be pretty surprised um, just because of the lack of attention this movie's getting. I, I saw it in just this desolate theater. Um, no one's particularly interested in this film. I, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that no one really wants to see a movie about Gary Hart. I, I recognize the significance that it has in our current political state, but I just don't think anybody's particularly that interested in going to see a movie about Gary Hart, and I don't think the Academy is going to be particularly interested in giving awards to a film about Gary Hart, particularly one that I think is a little bit mainstream in its plot execution. I think the reason Vice has a stronger shot is because it's Adam McKay, and Adam McKay puts on a really strong style that really reflects the tone of his film, um, and I think he has the perfect story for that, so I definitely think that Vice is a better shot than this movie, but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't put this one on your watch list. I don't think it's bad. I think I gave it like a 7 out of 10. I'd also lean towards like a 6. Uh, I think it's solid, but you know, I, I don't see it anywhere at the Oscars. Now, the final film I want to talk about, and I don't want to talk too much about the movie because I did really like it, and it borders on being experimental, and it does some really, 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 really cool stuff, and I would recommend it if you get a chance to go see it, is At Eternity's Gate. Um, I personally found Willem Dafoe to be pretty fantastic. And since Ryan Gosling's chances have sort of decreased as First Man has decreased, which I don't think is First Man's fault, um, I think if they had released it around November, it might have had a better shot. The issue was when it came out, A Star is Born was still, like, on. I mean, people were still talking about that movie. And as a result, First Man sort of floated to the back. And now here we are at the end of November... And it's completely out of theaters, and people are just sort of forgetting that it existed. And I think the Academy is more focused on movies with higher campaigning and, um, you know, more interesting things, like Bradley Cooper's directorial debut, right? Um, but since Ryan Gosling's chances have decreased, and I'm not saying they're gone, I do still think he has a shot, people are debating, is it Ethan Hawke for First Reformed, or is it Willem Dafoe for Ad Eternity's Gate? And as of right now... I, I would say they both have relatively equal chances. I think that they're both very low-brow films that not many people saw, very indie movies, and I, they're both very subtle, quiet, but impactful performances. And it's hard to say which one, because they both have pros, they both have cons. For instance, Willem Dafoe was a little later in the season, and Ethan Hawke was back in the summer, pretty much. But, you know, by that same token... I think more people gave attention to First Reformed as opposed to At Eternity's Gate, which I don't think is getting released really in many places at all. I got lucky to get it here. So, you could weigh it both ways um, in terms of who's going to get that fifth slot. I don't think Ryan Gosling is out of it entirely. I'd like to see Golden Globe nominations. And if I, Willem Dafoe, I don't think has any shot. 
at getting a Golden Globe nomination. That movie, there's no way that movie's going to get any kind of attention at the Golden Globes. But if Ethan Hawke picks up a nomination, I think that's big for him, and I think that that could shoot him forward a little bit. Um, I do think Willem Dafoe has a relatively all right shot. I would just like to see who picks up the Globe nominations before I really cement down my predictions for that category, because that's a tough one for the fifth slot. I don't know who's going to get in there, but I think Cooper, Bale, Malik, and who's the other one? Why is it slipping my mind? Vigo. Um, I think they are all pretty cemented. I, th I, I, I would be pretty comfortable nominating all four of those. But that's it for this video. Just a little recap on the Thanksgiving films. I'm going to get right back on the train of Oscar coverage because there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I get the favorite next week, I believe, next Friday. I should get that in theaters, so I plan on going to see that. Mary Queen of Scots is the week after Roma comes out on Netflix. I want to do sort of a Netflix type of recap, too, where I might talk about um, Roma... Uh, Ballad of Buster Scruggs, 22 July, and Outlaw King, something like that. I, uh, I actually haven't seen any of those. I'm watching Ballad of Buster Scruggs tonight. But that is it for me. If you guys have any questions or anything you want me to cover, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for sticking around with me. If you like this, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.